Welcome to philosophy. Today we're going to talk about Plato. Well, yeah, kind of Plato, uh, but uh, really Plato. <laughs> but first let's talk about Plato. Of course you had Plato, I'm sure, as a child. Maybe you still play with it. Maybe you have kids and you play with it. But it's a very simple toy, modeling play to some degree. You open it up and you can form it into all kinds of things. You can make a cupcake, you can make a kitty, you can make anything that you like. But whatever you do make, you're making a copy of the original. And that's how this relates to Plato. Socrates was easy to understand. So you would think that his most famous pupil, the one responsible for preserving Socrates' philosophy, would be equally easy to understand. Not so. Fundamental to Plato's teachings is his understanding of cosmology. Let's look at creation according to Plato. God created one perfect of everything that exists. One perfect bed, one perfect triangle, one perfect daisy, one perfect world. And he only created good. Now there is only one world. The earth is a copy of the eternal world. It is a globe. Because... It copies the perfect world. A globe is the perfect shape. It is like itself on all sides and edges. It is a ball. A cube is unlike its sides and its edges. A globe rotates because circular motion is the perfect motion. Now I'm just reporting this. I didn't write this. It is the only motion that does not need feet, or hands. There are four elements in continual proportions, earth, air, fire, and water. Thus it is in harmony. Thus it is not subject to death or disease. It is eternal. Man was created in the image of the gods. The gods are mainly fire, stars. Man is created first a soul. The soul existed, of course, before birth, the soul learned all knowledge before birth, and so learning is just recollection. Thus, Socrates' dialectical approach to teaching was to draw knowledge from the student rather than pour it in. Man's body is created many times. The impure soul is reincarnated according to his character, so he may become a ghost who haunts graves, or he may become an animal. If he's particularly evil, now, I didn't write this, I'm just reporting. He becomes a woman or an animal until reason wins and he becomes a philosopher. The true philosopher goes to his star at death to live in bliss with the gods. Now Plato, Plato, well, Plato <laughs> believed that when you make anything in this world, whether you manufacture a sword or you make a sculpture, you are making a copy of something that already exists. When you make that copy, it is less perfect than the original. According to Plato, forms are the original objects in the universe. So when you make a sword, for instance, then you're making a copy of a sword that's on Earth, but that copy of the sword that's on Earth is already a copy of the sword <clears throat> that's called form sword. So every time you make a copy, you're making it less perfect. So to make a copy of anything is to compromise the truth because it's less perfect. That is why Plato was opposed to the arts. That's also why forms are so important in understanding his philosophy. So here's to a good week in philosophy. I hope you enjoy Plato.